Hello everybody and welcome to our first in a series of lectures all about the Alkene homologous series which is in module 4 of the OCRA specification for A-level chemistry. In this video we're going to look at the formation of the carbon-carbon double bond, so that's focusing on orbital overlap, and we're also going to be looking at stereoisomerism in our alkenes, that's both EZ and cis trans. Check the timestamps in the video description to be taken straight to any of those topics right now. And you may also want to check there for any updates or tweaks I have to the video before you get started. Hi there guys and welcome to the online lecture for alkenes part one. Now an alkene is another example of a homologous series that we study in organic chemistry. But when we start talking about the bonding in an alkene, we can't help ourselves but jump straight to the carbon-carbon double bond, which is of course the functional group associated to that homologous series. However, for A-level, we need to know a little bit more information about what is actually in that double bond between the two carbon atoms. What we can talk about is that the single line between two carbon atoms or between any two atoms in organic chemistry that we've studied so far is an example of a sigma bond. And a sigma bond is when the orbitals that overlap to create the bond, so that's our electrons pairing up, their overlap is between the two atoms. Now that might sound like, well, obviously it's gonna be between the two atoms, but actually when we look at the alternative type of bonding in a moment, you'll see that that is going to be a little different. Now the second line that we're used to seeing in a carbon-carbon double bond is actually called a pi bond. And a pi bond is the side-on overlap of p orbitals above and below the two carbon atoms. See how that's very different? Let's have a look at a diagram to help us understand this more. So here, for instance, you can see I've got the essentials of my structure set up to begin with, with sigma bonds already drawn in the black. But notably, between my two carbons, I'm missing that extra line that would make this an alkene. What I'm missing here is my pi bond, which would be that second line being shown. Instead, however, what I have got is each carbon atom here has got a p orbital that isn't yet involved in any sort of bonding. And what happens to create that pi bond is above and below the atoms at exactly the same time above and below, we see side on p orbital overlap. And the resulting image is something like this one, where we've got these two areas of overlap above and below the two carbon atoms. And we say that this overlap, the simultaneous above and below, is the next bond that gets created between the two carbons, which as I've already named it, is our pi bond. So the difference is the pre-existing black line was a sigma bond, which is the overlap of orbitals between atoms. And then the second line that you can see I've labeled up down here is our pi bond, and that's the overlap of orbitals above and below the atoms in the bond. This diagram is something you are expected to be able to label and draw in the exam, so make sure you do understand all parts of it before moving forward. The next part of alkenes to consider is stereoisomerism. Now, this is a real biggie. There is a follow-up video to this one, which gives you a nice summary of all the features of stereoisomerism in alkenes. And even the word itself might seem really alien to you, the idea of saying stereoisomerism. But it's defined as molecules with the same structural formula, but the atoms are arranged differently in the space. This is a real confusing point in organic chemistry, and it's unlike anything we've really seen before. It's also very different from the structural isomerism that we introduced in the previous topic. So what does stereoisomerism look like and how does it start? It starts all because once the double bond has been formed between two carbon atoms, once I've generated that sigma and that pi bond, the bond is locked into that position. So what I'm unable to do is spin the bond and swap around all these groups. A normal sigma bond is rotatable. So if I had a CH3 up here where this R group is, I could happily spin that round. Whereas this bond, once it's been formed, it's locked into that position. And so stereoisomerism is all about the positioning of the groups 
around the carbons in the double bond once the lock, once the bond has been created. Now we also look at two distinctive categories of stereoisomerism in alkenes. One of them is called EZ isomerism, and the other is called cis-trans isomerism. EZ isomerism uses something called the kahn ingold prelog rules, which we'll explore on the next page. And cis-trans isomerism relies on the two carbon atoms, each being bonded to an example of the same substituent group. So for example, for a molecule that is an alkene to show cis-trans isomerism, this carbon would need a CH3 and the other carbon would need a CH3. Or this carbon would need a hydrogen and that carbon would need a hydrogen. And then the positioning of those groups helps determine whether it's a cis or a trans isomer. We'll explore this in more detail though on the coming pages. Moving over to our next page of this then, let's have a look at what an E isomer and a Z isomer would look like. And we're going to use the nice simple example of butuene, since it shows stereoisomerism and has E and Z isomers. So for instance here, typically you'll see now that when I want to talk about stereoisomerism, I seem to draw out the alkene in almost an X format. And that's because it really clearly lays it out to the examiner in an orientation they're expecting to see. So whenever you're drawing an E or a Z isomer in formulae like this, you must make sure that you draw it out in this clear X positioning. Otherwise, it could be deemed ambiguous and you might not get all the marks. So we've got to play the game a little bit there with that one. Now with EZ isomerism, what we do is we go to each carbon one at a time in the double bond and each carbon needs to have a high priority group assigned. So for instance here, let's have a look. We've got our left-hand carbon, which I've done in pink, and I've allocated this CH3 as the high priority group for this left-hand carbon. So why did I decide that that was gonna be the high priority group? Well, I used the atomic number of the immediate atom that was connected to the carbon in the double bond. For example, here, the immediate atom connected to the carbon in the double bond is another carbon, which has the atomic number of six. The alternative would have been this hydrogen just here, and that only has the atomic number of one. And so I decided that this CH3, the whole thing, was going to be the high priority group because of the initial atom's atomic number. I've then done the same thing on this side. I went to the right-hand carbon, completely ignoring the left, and assigned this CH3 as the high priority group on the right-hand carbon. Now, can you see how this group and this group are across from each other like this? One is top side, one is bottom. Well, that means that this is an example of an E isomer. The alternative way to have done this would have been before this bond was created, if this side or the other, but not both, was flipped over, then my two CH3s, for instance, would have been on the same side. Now, here, with two CH3s being on the same side, both my high priority groups being on the top, or I could have drawn them both on the bottom, that would have been fine. This would have been the Z isomer. We can introduce these letters as well to the front of the alkene name, if we're asked to in the exam, and you can draw these in skeletal formula as well. You might want to check the front cover of your notes for that one. This is just a reminder here then that we have increasing priority with increasing atomic number. We can have a look at another example then of EZ isomerism. And we'll use the examples of ethene-1,2-diol. Now for ethene-1,2-diol, same as last time, I go to each carbon one at a time, completely ignoring the other whilst I'm focusing on the one I need first. For example here, my left-hand carbon O and H here. The O has got a higher atomic number of 8 compared to the hydrogen of 1, so the OH group up here is my high priority. Same then for the other carbon, and we can see they are across from each other, so this is an example of an E isomer. Flip one side over, and what I've got then are both OHs, both my high priority groups according to the kahn ingold prelog rules, on the same side as each other. And so that means this one is going to be my Z isomer. Okay, so moving on to the next page, we can see some more examples where we have to almost keep walking, if you will, uh, through the structure to find out which group is high priority. 
Let's have a look at this first molecule to see an example of what I'm talking about. Here we can see we've got our left and right hand carbons in the double bond once again. And let's focus on our left one first. Carbon versus hydrogen, six versus one. This top section here is my high priority group. The other carbon, carbon versus carbon. So obviously there's no victor there. So I go to the next atoms up and I can see I've got two H's and a chlorine versus three atoms just under here comprising of two H's and a bromine. And so that's gonna mean, because the bromine has got a larger atomic number than the chlorine, that this bottom group here is higher priority. The two high priority groups are across from each other. And so that means that this is the E isomer. Flip one side, and remember that would have had to have been done before the bond was formed. I can't just spin the molecule around anymore. And I've got the two high priority groups on the lower side here, which means that this is now the Z isomer. The next example of this, got quite a lot of activity here, including a carboxylic acid group and some branching. So it's a very busy aliphatic molecule. Again, we look at each carbon one at a time. And in the exam, you might even want to cover up the other carbon so that you can focus purely on the high priority group identification on the left and then on the right. And here you can see I've allocated my left and right hand carbon high priority groups. And this one was a nice clear victory for the group at the top. Whereas here, what I needed to do was keep going a little bit, three H's versus two H's and a CH3, meaning this was higher priority. They're across from each other, they're on opposite sides, E isomer. So they're on opposite sides, so you can think of it like they're enemies. And then down here, flip it over, and I've got the two high priority groups on the same side, or if you want to die inside just a little, you could say that they are on the same side as each other. Yep, that's the thing. So now we've got our head around EZ isomers, let's have a look at cis-trans. There's a big misconception that E and trans are always going to be the same as each other, and that Z and cis are always going to be the same as each other as well. But that's a massive misconception, and we need to make sure that we don't fall into that trap. This does vary a little bit with exam board as well in terms of wording. What I want to focus on here is the OCR guidelines for this, because then when you get to university chemistry, the description and the reasoning here changes just a little bit more as well. So first off, I've got my molecule, it's pentuene, and I've identified already that this would be an E isomer diagram of pentuene, for instance, and the reason is because my high priority groups are above and below. I've done the same thing as last time, each carbon, one at a time, looking at where its high priority group is, and then looking to see if they're above and below or on the same side as each other. So I've allocated this one as an E isomer. You'll also notice I've allocated it as a trans isomer. The reason that I've allocated this as a trans isomer is because two of the groups attached to each carbon in the double bond are the same. Or we could say that each carbon in the double bond is bonded to the same substituent group. Here, for instance, those two groups are hydrogens. So this carbon has a hydrogen and that carbon has a hydrogen. That means that when we look at the position of these two groups, we can determine whether this molecule is cis or trans. When they are across from each other, it's trans. You can see down here, I've got Z because of my high priorities on the same side, and I've got cis because I've got my two of the same group on the same side as well. What we can see now for this example is I've got two bromines involved in the double bond. Now the fact that they are the same as each other and on the top side, or the bottom side it could have been because I can just flip the whole thing over I suppose, that makes this the cis isomer orientation. The fact that the two bromines actually just so happen to be the high priority groups as well on each carbon using the CIP rules means that this is the Z isomer as well. So there's a lot of oomph here behind the two bromines. They are causing for cis and Z. Similarly, on the second example just here, we can see that they are now across from each other. So the fact they are the same as each other means that this is going to be trans but the fact that they are the high priority groups means that this is E. So this is a different allocation of cis and trans and E and Z compared to the previous example. 
Don't always look for hydrogens and don't assume that the same element connected to the carbons in the double bond isn't going to be responsible for both those different types of stereoisomerism. This next molecule is an example that I did promise would be on the next page. I've actually done this as a separate example for you, so you can add this to your notes. This example of a stereoisomer showing our alkene bond just here, our double bond, is one where trans and Z are on the same structure. This is often assumed to be completely impossible if you have a shallow understanding of cis-trans and EZ isomerism. Here we can see that I've allocated the two groups at the bottom here as my high priorities. And that's because if I ignore the right-hand carbon, the bromine has got a bigger atomic number than the fluorine. And if I cover up the left-hand carbon, the iodine has got a bigger atomic number than the bromine. So these are my two high priority groups, meaning that this has been drawn in the Z isomer orientation. However, each carbon is bonded to the same substituent group, a bromine. And those bromines just so happen to be across from each other. So this molecule has also been drawn in a trans orientation. You must make sure that you don't think for one moment that E and trans are always going to be the same thing. They're always going to be paired together. Here, this is a clear example of where that doesn't take place. If I was to flip one side of this over, I would also be able to draw cis and E together. So you might want to add that to your notes as well. That's it for our first part of the online alkene lecture series. Click the link on screen now to be taken to a good follow-up video on different examples of EZ and cis-trans isomers. Until next time though, happy revising.